Hey guys, welcome back. It's my second vlog. Last time we watched how we move into studio. Unfortunately, not everything is ready, so we're gonna have a little change. Today, I will show you how we actually create art. Uh, one blank canvas is ready for us, and that's what we're gonna start with. Later on, I will answer some questions. I hope that's gonna give you more insight. Let's do it. Um, I'm working on a series, actually already created a few pieces. Um, they're going to be very colorful. Um, they're going to have some, let's say, 3D effect inside. Um, I'm going to use some certain foam to give a little bit of uh, structure and texture on top of it. And first part is um, choosing the colors and then we're going to see in which direction it's going to go. So it's like a moving process. Cool. Benny, Q&A time. Yeah. Right. Let's answer some questions. Let's um, see. I guess what made you go into art? What was your first interaction with art? First interaction was um, <clears throat> totally on the, on the, let's say, consumer side. Um, I was starting to become a collector, being very um, interested in art, um, traveled to almost all the art shows around the world, around the globe, um, learned a lot about, um, let's say, different perspectives on art, uh, different artists, went to studio visits, like how is being art created, all these things, the whole process, got the chance to meet a great artists, got the chance to meet uh, other great collectors with a very, very good eye, uh, great curators, um, and being so much soaked in that, in that whole scene and everything, actually I felt like um, it's something I would like to do myself. Who, uh, who was Benny Motion before um, being an artist? What, <laughs> what events led you to be to where you are now? Um, I was, um, I was uh, prior to, let's say, my, my uh, journey into art. I was in the financial industry for uh, quite some time. Um, that's also where I started to um, collect art. Um, it basically started uh, by moving into a new office. All the walls were completely white and I have had uh, my assistant looking up some art pieces, just prints, Andy Warhol, the usual stuff that you know, that was about my whole knowledge I had about art. And then um, she came with uh, a summary of that, uh, what we could get, what the prices is and everything. It was fairly expensive, um, even though they were just prints. And I was like, no, if we're gonna start investing that amount of money, into making, uh, let's say, our shop look more, um, more nice and more warm, then I'd rather go for real art, you know. Uh, that was actually just a small conclusion out of this. And by that, um, I got introduced uh, to two curators who then introduced me to the whole art world and everything and um, gave me a vision or a view on um, what, is, what is maybe a good idea to collect, what is maybe less, not only money-wise, but also like what fits together um, in the office. That was a great learning curve. And then in small steps, I started to do this uh, myself and replicate what I learned and uh, put my own passion and, and eye and everything into it, researched a lot uh, about artists and all these things. And out of all the things that I've been touched with, art was the one where I said like, no, that's something I would like to do day in, day out. This is what I would like to live. Great. For now, I would try this one out, continue with the next one. Sometimes then you see inspirations in between. It's always good to work on three different canvases at the same time. Um, now we started with this one. We're going to continue with the next one. Hey, Benny, I need a TikTok. Hey. Choose wisely. Okay. I'll go for left. Okay. Spray. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Good. Colorful. That makes it and a bit easier. And lastly, we have mood. Left, right. Okay, let's go for middle. Sad. Ooh, okay. So we have to spray in color and it has to be sad. That's, that's not going to be so easy. So we just came from Paris pretty much. Um, could you tell us a bit more about the exhibition and the series that came out? Um, Paris was maybe planned within a month more or less. Uh, we had the feeling that we should um, not only rely on, on let's say, on, online visibility, but also give the people a chance to actually come and touch uh, much more. Um, even though due to the pandemic and everything, I think stuff changed, the internet is much more used than even before, much more people uh, use the internet for certain things, but still I find an art piece, a physical art piece is still totally different uh, once you stand in front of it. So um, my goal was to um, 
do during the Art Basel uh, Paris, where we have apparently most people interested in art in, in the same city, um, to use this venue um, to give an access to it and to show it and we found a great space so that was the second part like it has to be presented the right way we found a beautiful space and that's when we said like okay it's short term but we can do it and um, it was also a great learning curve uh, for the next one and uh, overall I have to say I was super happy with the whole event the team worked great uh, the, the crowd was super nice and um, so for me, this was really an, uh, a moment to embrace, uh, which I will never forget. And um, uh, also, it, it gave uh, the taste of it, which I want to have more. So we're already in planning for the next show in Italy. And um, I think that's also going to be great. And we know certain things that we want to improve. And we for sure can do that. Awesome. Italy, when are we going? <laughs> Well, it still has to be defined where. There's three places uh, in discussion. One is Milano, Trieste or Venice. Um, it's very difficult. They're all amazing. Um, but um, for me personally, I think Trieste is a, is a very good starting point because apparently from the location. Um, and second, also, like, let's say um, it's a very beautiful, cute city. And um, I would not make the venue too big. I would like to show actually only one new series. And um, for that, I think Trieste would be nice. And uh, it's accessible for from many sites. So we will have a lot of people that already know me. And for them, it's not a big thing to, to travel there. This is it. If it's sad or not, hard to say. To me, it has some sad parts in it, but uh, you know, should always be optimistic. So it has both of it, and uh, it's a fun, fun work actually. Good challenge. What is your current thought on the on NFTs and art as NFTs? Um, I mean, NFT. The problem with the NFT is that most people associate it too much with crypto. So first of all, I would completely separate crypto and NFT. And the NFT itself, I think, is a, is a great tool to have a unique art piece in a digital form. And from that perspective, I think NFTs are still super interesting. Um, what I don't think is so interesting are these huge collections, which have like 10,000 items or whatever. I think this is almost a bit too much because you kind of lose the overview. You will never see all 10,000. So you can't really choose uh, or you don't have the time to re review everything. Um, I think this is actually a pity. So smaller series, to me, make more sense uh, because actually you really get an overview of what is actually on the market and it makes it also more, more special. What are your thoughts on art as an asset or as a store of value? Um, I think it's absolutely true and it's absolutely uh, correct to see art as an asset also. Um, if you look at it from a pure investment perspective, um, you got to be advised well. Um, this can also go wrong. Um, still, I, I would suggest buy what you love. Um, there is enough, let's say, good investment art pieces. Oh, yeah, disclaimer, this is not investment advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not giving any advice, but just like my own experience. Uh, that's what I can share. And um, definitely go for what you love, uh, but be advised well uh, what actually um, will remain or increase. I mean, nobody has a formula for it, but there are certain indicators which you can track, uh, auction results, etc., uh, which is important. Um, so from that perspective, yes, absolutely. The market is huge. We're at 68 point uh, whatever billion turnover on the whole art market. That's, that's huge. And um, I think it's great that um, actually art is an asset class uh, for also investors uh, because it gets, um, let's say, uh, secured. Unfortunately, not shown enough, but it gets secured somewhere. Who are your favorite artists? Uh, do you have a personal collection as well? And where do you source inspiration? Mm -hmm. um, inspiration in the, in the first place, clearly from art fairs, art shows, whatever, um, because there you have such a big variety. Uh, it's absolutely great to go from room to room, from booth to booth, um, and, and you see different things. And um, I think that's, that's absolutely great. 
even the difference in between what you really like and what you don't like personally, um, or where you don't get an access, let's say not like, but like access, um, that's one part. I would say that's like the, the basis. And then um, especially going into, let's say, deeper research on um, topics, on colors, or whatever you like. That's not always paint or art driven. This can be also very much fashion. This can be movies, um, this can be photos, um, totally goes in different directions, landscape photos for example. There are so many things that you can take it out and I very much work by first of all choosing the color I'm intrigued with and then following that pass and seeing how it's been used, uh, what you can do with it and then maybe um, different assim assimilations to it, like how, how would you combine it, whatever. Um, I think that would be the second stage. Um, my, my personal collection is also very much based on this. Um, it, it really goes from very colorful stuff, um, let's say uh, Sam Francis, for example, um, to um, experimental things like Julian Schnabel, for example, uh, which I absolutely adore, um, to also uh, things which are black and white, not color based, Christopher Wool, for example. Um, so I, I try to, to, to have like uh, this variety as well, um, because when you look at your own collection, uh, you would also like to have um, the, this in between. So whenever you go around, you would be able um, to like reflect on your daily mood or whatever. Uh, I think that is very, very important to have that and uh, like that I also build up my collection. Okay, so it's already uh, almost the end of 2022. What's your vision for next year? Yeah, uh, the year is closing. Um, I think um, the vision for next year is definitely having four or five shows. That's very, very important to me. Um, I would like to um, be much more with the people, get this reflection also. Um, that's the main point why I would like to have a show, actually. I would like to much more interact with the spectators, let's say, uh, with collectors. Um, that is really something I would, um, I would uh, put on my agenda for next year, or is on the agenda for next year. Um, I think that is very, very important to me to get the like, first-hand uh, feedback. The second thing is, um, creating a plan for the series for next year, not defining what they're going to be about. This will come with time, but having a certain, let's say, schedule of saying like, okay, one series per month, for example, I would like to try that. Maybe that's not going to work, but I would like to try say like, okay, each month has a topic and each month is going to be a, a separate series. Second thing is um, also the fashion design, which we started. Um, this is something I would like to um, make in a broader spec. Uh, and for next year, working on it, most pieces arrive in the first week of January. So that's going to be interesting. And that's something I would love to, uh, to push as well. Okay, I guess I'm out of questions. Um, I guess we can let everybody else ask. Right? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So guys, thanks for watching the second one. Really happy that uh, you joined. So actually, he's right. Bring up your questions, send them. I'm happy to answer. Thanks a lot. See you soon.